I'm pleased to be joined by a special guest, New York Member of Congress Nydia Velasquez, who represents the 12th Congressional District with constituents in parts of three boroughs, Brooklyn, Queens, and Manhattan. Welcome to Citywide. Thank you, Ken. So have you been out on the campaign trail? And Yes. Uh, in fact, I just came back from Ohio. I was campaigning uh, throughout the Latino communities. Um, Ohio is a battleground state, and the Latino community, if they come out to vote in big numbers, uh, can make the difference. And what was, uh, uh, what was it like out there? You had been out there in in the spring for Hillary Clinton? Well, I, I was very much impressed. Um, I think that the level of engagement is incredible at all levels. But most interestingly to note how many young people are volunteering, organizing, knocking on doors. And that is quite refreshing in politics uh, to get that level of excitement. And one factor. Uh, it's uh, uh, the economic crisis that we are uh, witnessing. You know, every place I went, black, Latinos, white, seniors, uh, middle aged, everyone was asking me about the financial situation of our economy. Well, I'm going to turn to that in a second, but I want to ask you, before the convention, you were quoted as saying that uh, Latinos might not be enthusiastic about Senator Obama. Have, have, mm -hmm. Has your view on that changed? And if so, what's, what's changed? Well, Ken, uh, of course I was very much out there for Hillary Clinton. And of course, as a woman, um, I wanted her to play a role in the future government of our country because of her experience and being a woman and so knowledgeable in, ter in terms of foreign and domestic issues. But right now, the challenge is incredible in the sense that there's so much at stake in this election. And, you know, uh, Senator Obama uh, really has a vision about what needs to be done uh, in terms of the bread and butter issues that are important to working families in this country. After eight years of what uh, Governor Bush had, uh, the damage that he has inflicted, not only in our economy, but our standing around the world, it is too important uh, for not only uh, the future of our uh, country, but uh, for generations to come. So. I am going to be doing whatever it takes uh, to get the Republicans out of the White House and to expand the majority, not only in the House, but also very important on the Senate side. So give us your insider's take. The, um, you know, the, the presidential election was sort of moving along. There were rumblings in the business pages about the subprime crisis. All of a sudden, it seemed to smack America uh, in the face with a meltdown on uh, on Wall Street. What was it like being in Congress and having this financial tsunami come over the country? Um, well, let me say that in my 16 years in Congress, I have never felt the way that I felt for the last three weeks. It was quite... Um, emotionally draining for me because I understood how the American public was so angry. They really indicted uh, Wall Street and they felt that it was the greed coming out of Wall Street that brought us here to this economic crisis. And the fact that the government, uh, really the lack of oversight in terms of regulations that they allow for things to get worse. So uh, when we were negotiating the language and, and it was like a roller coaster, you know, one day you have the Secretary of the Treasury coming to um, meet with the, the leaders, Nancy Pelosi, Senator Reid, they come out of that meeting saying, look, we got to pass this legislation, a three page or two and a half pages uh, legislation that basically was given absolute powers to this administration and to the Secretary of the Treasury. And it reminded me of uh, the whole um, um, argument that were made during the war resolution to invade Iraq. We gotta do it, this is the information, and if we don't go in, 
a lot of things are going to happen. Um, weapons of mass destruction, biological weapons, and all kind of um, information that later on proved to be false. So there is a lack of confidence in this government, and there is a lack of public trust. And for me, uh, you know, this is the second time again uh, can I trust this administration in but terms was, of what they're telling the us? House Republicans that sort of took that populist anger and tried to turn it back against the administration. Well, it's amazing uh, when you are in a desperate situation, uh, some people are willing to commit political suicide. Uh, I, it is the height of hypocrisy coming from Republicans in the House who wanted um, uh, to deregulate uh, laws that are in the books. And they thought that a way for them strategically to gain back uh, the public trust was to take that to take that position going after Wall Street and CEOs, uh, even though that was not in their heart, even though the history uh, doesn't prove that they are that that is the real position that they're taking. What do you think this means for New Yorkers? After all, Wall Street is the financial engine of our city, and many of our neighbors and friends work on yeah. Wall Street. It's, it's, it must have made you feel in a very awkward position having to, to defend the more affluent you know, uh, residents of the city. Well, look, uh, this is going to have a major economic impact uh, in New York State, on New York. Um, revenues are going to... Um, not be there. We have close to 300, 330,000 jobs that are related uh, to the financial industry uh, in terms of the entire region. And if things really got bad, uh, we could lose between 30 to 60,000 jobs in New York. So that's a real issue. But um, it, 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 my position wasn't based on defending wealthy New Yorkers. It was what, what was right uh, in terms of stabilizing um, the capital markets and the financial institutions. Um, uh, it, it could sound good going after them. It could sound good and make you feel good in the public eye, voting no. Um, but I, 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 really, I really searched hard and long uh, to make the final decision that I that I made, and that was to support the legislation. Do you think that this that there's going to be a political backlash against New York? Do you think that it'll be more difficult to get funding for homeland security or transportation projects or you know the other kinds of, of big asks that New York counts on Washington for? Well, not only New York. I think that uh, there's not going to be a backlash in in, in the sense that people are going to say and uh, other members, you know, this has been caused by Wall Street that is coming from New York. They know that the ramifications and, and the ripple effect that this is going to have in the entire economy. Uh, but we are going to face very difficult challenges, economically speaking, in terms of the many issues that we want to address from health care to education. Um, I, you know, you have a uh, No Child Left Behind uh, a program uh, established by the president that was underfunded by $55 billion. The goals were great, but the goals mean nothing if you don't provide the resources. So that, that will be uh, the challenges that we're going to be confronting. And what kind of leadership did the White House provide during this period of time? Was it all the Secretary of Treasury, other than the President giving one speech? It, it was hard to tell whether his staff was being effective behind the scenes. Well, this was a national challenge. And the fact of the matter is that the President wasn't there. He was in a bunker. And that was when we needed real leadership to look at the nation straight in their eyes and to say, this is the situation that we are confronting. This is what we need to do. But um, uh, the main negotiator has been uh, Paulson. And I believe uh, that this is a man with integrity and honesty that a lot of the members, including uh, Charlie Rangel and the leadership, has a lot of respect for him. Um, but in a case like this, that is so 
uh, that involves so many people in this country, that is the entire economy, we needed to have a president, a strong president with strong leadership skill, and he wasn't there. Uh, and he hasn't been there for the long time now. So that made the whole negotiation process more difficult. Do you think that um, there's any merit to the claims from some of the Republicans that the root of the crisis was democratic policies encouraging changes to the Community Reinvestment Act, the liberalizing mortgages, the push for home ownership under Bill Clinton, um, that basically the stage was set and that it was the Democrats um, responding to Fannie Mae and, and Freddie Mac because of political contributions that kept uh, the situation from being dealt with earlier? No. I think that the roots of this uh, go back to the repealing of uh, Glass-Steagall that would allow for the insurance company and the banking industry uh, to mingle together and the fact that uh, regulations were not applied, that there was a lack of oversight from federal regula regulators. SEC, lo SEC lowering um, the debt requirements. And uh, it leverage. was not an accident that uh, McCain said that he will ask Chairman Cox uh, to resign uh, because as a regulator, he felt and he know and he knows that regulation, the lack of oversight of those regulations was um, that created uh, the major problems that we were seeing. Um, yes, there was an attempt, and always been an attempt, to increase home ownership in America. But we are not advocating for uh, loans to be given or approved to people who do not qualify. What do we ask is for a level playing field, that if they have their income, that if they have their credit, that we do everything possible to be able for these people to qualify for uh, uh, mortgages. But we didn't uh, ask for Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac to go into these uh, vehicles that they created and uh, much less for um, the financial institutions to uh, put all these mortgages together, package them together, and sell and resell those uh, those packages to the point that today is going to be to be very difficult to identify those uh, foreclosures or those um, uh, mortgages that are in the verge of foreclosures. Citywide will continue with Congresswoman Nydia Velasquez right after this. Getting tested is the way to take care of their families. That's why real men wear gowns. For a list of the tests you need, go to AHRQ.gov. Welcome back to Citywide. We're speaking with New York Congresswoman Nydia Velasquez. Because of this economic tsunami that has washed up on the uh, streets of uh, Wall Street, um, foreign policy issues seem to have been pushed to aside. The war in Iraq, uh, the Russian incursion into uh, Georgia, okay. Iran, mm -hmm. um, the war on terrorism, Afghanistan, um, Korea. That's, Korea um, where are we in terms of sort of those critical issues uh, from the perspective of, of the House of Representatives? Well, uh, those are important issues, uh, but um, if you look at the campaign uh, that is going on right now and um, the polls that have been taken, uh, the number one issue is the economy. And people really want to know what are the vision and uh, the proposals that each one of the candidates uh, will be uh, discussing. And uh, there's going to be this uh, debate that is going to be based on the economy. So all those foreign policy issues are, are, are there, and uh, but right now they are not in the uh, in people's mind. Um, so I want to ask you: the, neither one of the candidates had made um, specific economic proposals, the the cornerstone of their campaign, uh, up until the recent uh, events. Did either one of them have any substantive input into the legislation that was ultimately passed? 
Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Senator Barack Obama, he espoused four principles uh, for uh, the legislation. And uh, basically, they are containing the legislation. Um, you know, what McCain did from oversight, uh, the fact that it wasn't a blank check, they wanted $700 billion, and we said, no, the first down payment is going to be $350 billion. Uh, we created uh, a structure of two oversight boards, and those two boards that will be comprised of people appointed by the leaders of the House and the Senate in conjunction with the president, they will discuss with the Secretary of the Treasury through a report that they have to present to us uh, detailing whether or not we need to go into the second phase. So it's not going to be a blank check. And uh, that uh, was clearly stated by Barack Obama from the very beginning. But the, the stock market doesn't seem to have responded well to the legislation. Is that because it didn't go far enough or because they think that it, you, you made it too complicated? Well, this is a global economy. And so what is happening here is not isolated and is a reaction to what's going on right now in the Asian markets. It seems to me uh, that the reaction in uh, the Asian markets and in Europe is that some of the financial institutions that are in trouble, they are um, waiting to see what type of uh, rescue or recovery package uh, those governments uh, will put together to help uh, those banks in, in, in those markets. You chair the Small Business Committee in the Congress. What are you hearing from small businesses about the economic situation? Well, they are the most directly impacted because uh, small businesses depend so much on capital. They don't have the liquidity. They don't have the cash. And so every month they depend on the line of credit that is provided by those banks. Some of those banks, especially community banks, depend on uh, loans and that are provided to them by uh, the, uh, the big banks. banks. Yeah. So when that has been cut out, um, those banks have been um, forced to cut the line of credit to those uh, uh, small companies. So they are struggling. They are struggling. Not only that, they're cutting the line of credit and in some instances they have loans. They are not they have not defaulted on those loans, but those banks are recalling those loans. So it is very, very difficult. Coupled with energy prices, coupled with uh, food prices and 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 all the uh, uh, the cost of health insurance for small businesses that skyrocketed to 34 percent in the last year so they are being hit uh, by hard on on uh, as a result of this um, economic crisis that we're seeing at the beginning of the year um, I think that you shared the optimism of a lot of women that this was going to break be a breakthrough year in politics for women and it, it has been a heartbreaking year in some ways on the Democratic side, but it also has been um, a, a, a breakthrough year on the Republican side where they've nominated a, a woman for, uh, for vice president. So I was wondering what your reaction was to the nomination of Sarah Palin. Well, uh, first, I didn't know Sarah Palin. And basically, most Americans didn't know anything about Sarah Palin. Uh, so it was quite a surprise. And uh, we wonder why. Why was she chosen by uh, McCain? My first reaction is, here he comes again. He has to prove to the American public that he's a maverick. And while a lot of people were expecting for a Mitt Romney to be picked or chosen as by VP, uh, because of his knowledge as a businessman and the economy, um, but it didn't happen. And um, we know that McCain was uh, facing a real issue with a conservative base. He wasn't connecting with them. They do not. They do not trust McCain. So this lady, the governor of Alaska, uh, because of her evangelical um, uh, roots, um, provides that bridge that will f bring the 
a conservative base to take a second look at John McCain and for them to feel comfortable with John McCain. Beyond that, well, she is the governor of Alaska, a small state, um, and uh, she called herself an expert on energy. Um, and um, we don't know yet uh, the real accomplishments uh, in okay, terms of the economy and energy. Aside from the outcome, which we don't know as, mm -hmm. as we're having this conversation, do you think that it, it was it helped the cause of women generally that the Republican Party nominated a woman? And do you think that um, the values, it's clear that she's a values warrior. She was elected in Alaska in part because of that. Um, are her values the, the values of, of, of the American uh, uh, people? And, and if there's a disconnect there, how do we reconcile that? Well, uh, I have to say that women in this country really are, are not excited about Sarah Palin being the first woman VP um, because she doesn't really represent uh, the values of uh, working, uh, hardworking women in this country. You know, you have McCain who voted against equal pay for equal uh, work. Uh, so how could you, as a woman, be part of a ticket where the the, uh, the president, the uh, the presidential candidate, has such a, a questionable record when it comes to women's issue? Let me turn uh, uh, with the little time we have left to more local. Um, I was going to say local affairs, but I didn't want to revisit how our current governor got his position. But the current mayor um, has said that he's now interested in saying for a third term and having the city council uh, pass that bill. Um, what's your take on term limits, how the mayor is going about it, and what do you think is going to play out politically next year? Well, Ken, I, I don't support term limits. Uh, I, I thought that that was wrong because every every time that you run for office or you have to run for re-election, that is term limits. So the people of that congressional district or the city will decide whether or not they will rehire you. So, but putting that aside, uh, uh, Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg was very clear from the beginning that he will oppose any changes to term limits. And uh, it is questionable uh, his motive to do this because first, to me, it is totally undemocratic. It is totally, as I said before, un-American that we have conducted twice a referendum where the, clearly the voters of the city of New York expressed themselves in regarding term limits. So uh, it is kind of selfish uh, from his end to say that I'm the savior. But and you don't think that his expertise, his financial experience, That's his relationships the are the key that, thing now? That is not the issue. If he wants, if he really feels that he is the only one with the ability, the, the intellectual capacity to deal with the economic crisis, uh, let bring this to a referendum, let the people decide, and then, if not, he has so much money that he can create an independent uh, political party and run in that political independent uh, party. But to overturn and uh, the people's uh, uh, will is totally unacceptable. And uh, I even question the fact that in order to make such a change, um, that the Department of Justice might have to play a role since uh, New York City, three of the boroughs are under uh, the Voting Rights Act. And uh, so I, I, I totally disagree with uh, um, Michael Bloomberg. He is totally wrong on this one. My thanks to New York Congresswoman Nydia Velasquez. I'm Ken Fisher. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Citywide.